Have you ever wondered why your sweet child turned into a rebellious teenager? Keep watching and I'll share some common problems in parenting that could lead to a rebellious spirit in your child. Hello friends and thanks for watching the next video in this parenting series. In over two decades of student ministry, I've encountered numerous exasperated parents in my office who were at a total loss for why their good child suddenly turned rebellious and defiant. As I met with both parents and students, I began to see a pattern emerge. The common denominator was a lack of emotional connection between parent and child. While this defiant behavior seems to come out of nowhere, it often develops slowly in the absence of emotional connection. Most issues that develop in our relationships with others, especially with our loved ones, are rooted in a breakdown in communication. And I'm not talking about a breakdown in superficial communication that merely involves the exchange of information. I'm talking about relational and emotional communication that can only be found when an emotional connection is present. We see a lot of rebellious and defiant behavior emerge during adolescence. Parents are left miffed at this sudden change, not realizing that they're still parenting their adolescent just like they parented their child. Their child has changed, but they have not. Parents often try to preserve childhood as long as possible, and in doing so, they miss the transition into adolescence. In their futile attempt to stop time, they miss the beauty that every new season can bring, and the parent-child friendship that emerges only when emotional connection is present. In the early days of parenting, childhood should be about molding and shaping little hearts and minds in the nurture and admonition of the Lord which includes teaching, warning, loving, disciplining, and pointing them towards Christ and the gospel. The adolescent and teenage years have the same aim, yet the parent does this through guiding them on their journey to discover who they are as individuals and who they are in Christ. In our last video, we learned that the Bible has a lot to say about discipline or teaching in the parent-child relationship. Today, we'll take a look at the Shema, found in Deuteronomy 6. The Shema was a philosophy or a mantra that the children of Israel were serious about living by. It starts with the greatest commandment, which is to love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and might. Then we are given five characteristics of how this commandment should be taught in homes. First, it should be comprehensive. In verse 6, when it says that these words should be on your heart, it means a deep understanding and the priority is on understanding over just simple information. Number two, it should be sharpening. In verse 7, teach diligently is a picture of honing a blade to a fine edge. It's focused and intentional. Number three, it should be consistent. Consistently utilizing the teachable moments in life when you sit together, walk together, play together, morning, noon, and night. This pictures our journey of faith and how it's lived daily. Again, this is taking advantage of the teachable moments as we engage in day-to-day -day activities, recognizing that our children are the very best discerners of our hypocrisy. Your own walk will speak volumes to them. Occasional spurts in intentionality will almost always be dwarfed by patterns of neglectful or absent connection. Number four, it will be strengthening. Verse eight says, you shall bind them on your hands. The Orthodox Jews of today still wear the phylacteries bound around their heads and their hands. It's actually a tiny chest that contains scripture that they keep close to their minds and their actions. Scripture is alive and its work is both formative and transformative in your home and in your child's heart. And finally, number five, it should be displayed. Verse 9 says, to write them on the doorpost and gates. The Shema was to set them apart from the pagan world. So should our biblical parenting be public as a declaration of who we serve, establishing the pattern of bold obedience for our children. This passage provides us a strong foundation for how we should parent our children. More importantly, this passage gives us a depth to biblical parenting that we should strive to teach. It's born out of a deep connection with our children, because we should be shepherding their hearts more than shaping their behavior. Whether or not they can communicate this difference, they definitely know and they feel it. So how is this passage practically lived out in everyday parenting situations? Here are three ways to help you build emotional connection with your children. Number one, invest. Intentionally invest in your emotional connection with your child. 
Find common interest or learn to love their interest. Plan times and activities that focus on verbal communication. Things like dinner or going for drives or taking them out to get ice cream or going on walks. You need to do more than just simply watch things together. Focus on activities that build connection. These are times to enjoy one another and to be in situations where life can be experienced together. Number two, study. Become a student of your child. What makes them tick? What are their fears? What brings them joy? How do they want to be loved? Don't be a mere silent observer. Be intentional about learning who they are. And number three, grow with your child. Don't fail to transition your parenting style as they move through developmental stages especially as they move from childhood into adolescence. Be vulnerable and authentic with them. They need to see you still growing in the Lord. They need to know that it's more important to learn and grow than to be right. And you'll need to model that as a parent. Communicating gospel truth to them in the absence of emotional connection is going to have little impact. While it may seem like there's no greater focus, it's sort of like handing a newborn a bottle of milk. What they desperately need for nourishment is only received through the connection between parent and child. Focus on that connection first, then faithfully lead them to love Christ above all. But do it in the context of authentic relationship through emotional connection. I'm Shane of AnchorChristianCounseling.com. Thanks for taking the time to watch these videos. If you find them helpful, please do us a favor and subscribe and hit the like button. Also, if you have any questions or comments, please don't hesitate to put them in the comment section below.